Hey, hey, I'm Matt, and I'm going to share with you my top tips for how you can live your best quarantine life. Maybe you're preparing to go into quarantine soon, or maybe you're in quarantine right now and looking for ideas for things to do. This is actually my third time in quarantine. What? Last September, I had to do a 14-day home quarantine complete with electronic tagging. Then last month, when I went to Malaysia, I had to do a seven-day hotel quarantine. And now I'm finishing off my 21-day hotel quarantine here in Hong Kong. So. I've got this quarantine thing pretty nailed and I'm gonna share with you what I've learned. So, let's go! Well, can't actually go anywhere. The space you have here in your hotel room is something that you're going to have to live with quite literally for the entire duration of your quarantine. So if you have the option of choosing, then I would do your research and choose wisely. And my personal advice would be to choose the largest size of room that your budget allows for above anything else because the size of your room is just not something that you can change or do anything about. That said, there are things that you can do to make more of the space that you have. My room is only a standard size room. It's not a suite or anything, but it's decently sized. It's got all of this space by the window and we've got what one, two, three steps on the bed, which is nice size. But then I've also got all of this other space around here, which isn't really that useful for me. Now, before you get too obsessed with what storage space your room has or doesn't have, I would advise you to first consider which of your belongings that you have with you, you are actually going to use during your quarantine. Now, for example, I knew that I wasn't going to wear my jeans or even my shoes during this entire time. So I've just stashed them back into my suitcase and then kept my suitcase away. Other things that I'm definitely going to be using, like my electronics, I have out and my clothes that I am going to wear, I have organized into the storage space. And on that note, now is definitely the time you'll want to discover all of the storage space that hotel rooms have. Beyond the obvious cupboards and drawers, you could also consider keeping anything that you have onto ledges or underneath the bathroom sink. The key is basically to be creative and make the best available use of whatever space that you have. Another thing which I found to be particularly useful when organizing my room is to have some separate functional areas. So over here, I've got a little kitchenette set up, which I'll talk more about when we get to talking about food. And over there, I've kept all of my work stuff. I also have this uh, load of free space here from all that reorganization I did, which is useful for exercise, but also quite nice just to pace about in an empty space. The other thing with reorganizing the space, putting your own touches to everything, is that it really helps me feel like it's more of my home for these 21 days of my quarantine, rather than me being stuck in uh, somebody else's hotel room. So I would highly recommend that you also put your own little touches to whatever space you're in. If you can have little decorative touches, I think that helps even more to make the space your own. Uh, my friends very kindly brought me an orchid early on, so that has been living with me in the room. And I've also managed to make a fruit bowl out of the ice bowl that they brought and all the fruits that they've been supplying me with. So. Yeah, I, I really do feel like this is a bit of my home for these 21 days. When you're in quarantine, chances are the meals that will be provided to you are going to be more masticated, more basic, rather than a gourmet experience. If you're one of the lucky few who is in a nice hotel with such a gourmet experience, then feel free to skip this section uh, and pay more attention to the physical activity and exercise section. For the rest of us, the meals we'll be getting are probably going to be more, you know, they're going to be okay, I guess, uh, but they're probably not going to be meals that you would have chosen to eat. Uh, here in my hotel, Nina Hotel, the meals I've been getting are, I would say, maybe about a 6 out of 10. 
So uh, looking at dinner tonight, I've got some rice, I've got some chicken, which is probably, it's, it's okay. Like, you know, I, I can't really complain too much about it. If I ate it, it would have been fine. I just wouldn't have enjoyed it very much. A good way to think about how to improve the flavor and the experience of food. Salt, fat, acid, and heat. Just four basic elements can make or break a dish. Usually when the quarantine meals arrive, they are at best a little bit warm, uh, almost certainly not piping hot, which already diminishes the experience of eating. So cue my favorite item that I've brought into my quarantine, which is this portable electric cooker. What I thought at the risk of sounding like a TV shopping channel, is to show you what I am going to be doing with my dinner and explaining and giving you tips along the way. So first thing I'm going to do with the dinner that I've got is to steam up the rice and reheat it so that I have rice that is actually piping hot, which is how rice really should be eaten. Salt and fat. I don't think you're actually going to struggle too much with most meals which are provided to you, but if you are, uh, I'm sure it's pretty easy to ask your hotel to give you a bit of salt. And if you want some fat, an easy way is to get these little packets of butter, which quite often they might give you uh, during breakfast. The one key seasoning which I think people don't really think of uh, is acid. And that really helps bring out flavors in a lot of food. No. For acidity, I've chosen to use uh, lemons because I also think they smell really great and they're super natural. Alongside of all of those, I would say bring your favorite condiments. So for me, this is a Malaysian sambal, which is a dry chili paste with chilies, anchovies, dry prawns, uh, onions. It is spicy, salty, super yummy. It's got tons of umami, which I can literally eat this with just about anything. So this is my condiment of choice, but do bring something that you like. I think most people do have a particular condiment that you could add to pretty much everything. Uh, so bring that with you. It really help you enjoy your meals. I think that's done now, so I'm gonna just set this aside and now heat up the other parts of my meal. What I'm really trying to do with this chicken is um, really try to re-crisp up the skin a little bit so that it's a bit more enjoyable to eat. Already smells so much better with the crispy chicken skin. So um, that's pretty much done. And now that brings me to the point about having proper plates and cutlery. I did actually bring my own cutlery, but the hotel provided me with plates, glasses, and bowls. And that's been really, really helpful to elevate the experience of eating because it's so, so much nicer to eat off proper plates and cutlery rather than these plastic containers. So um, even if you don't do anything else, I would highly suggest asking your hotel if they can provide you with real plates and cutlery. Uh, otherwise, I would even consider bringing it myself if the hotel really couldn't provide these to me. That crispy chicken skin made all the difference. <laughs> hey, if you're finding this video useful so far, would you do me a favor and click the like button underneath this video right now? Really, really appreciate it. One of the consequences of being in quarantine is that the opportunities for physical activity are severely limited. Now, even if you're not normally a workout type person, then any walking you'd have done to get yourself to work, to go to the shops, to go to lunch, all of that is gone. So it really does take a bit of effort to get some physical activity back into your routine. Um, and for me, Exercise, physical activity is one of those things which 
really really makes me feel more energetic makes me feel more alive so i would highly highly recommend that you do get some good quality physical activity uh, when you're in your quarantine some of the most popular items just because they work in, in limited space are things like this walking pad which is a basic treadmill or exercise bikes uh, a lot of hotels these days will actually rent exercise equipment out to their quarantine guests or there are private companies who do these rentals so definitely something to look into where you are before you start your quarantine stay uh, i actually got given this walking pad by another quarantine guest here in the hotel who had finished her quarantine just as I was starting mine so thank you so much for this Eva. I'm not normally a cardio person and cue my continued heavy breathing but I do find it quite useful to jump on this uh, when I'm watching television or anything like that then sneakily get in some exercise. Something that I did bring with me is this yoga mat. I don't actually do yoga but it gives me a good, reliable, grippy surface for me to do some calisthenics or body weight exercises. You can also get creative with what you have available in your room to do a little bit of weight training. Or maybe now's the perfect time for you to check out and try some online dance classes. I've also been fortunate in that I've been able to work from home, uh, both in my day job as well as making these videos. If you're not as fortunate as to be able to work from home, then this is probably the best time you'll ever have to do that online course you've always wanted to do, practice those skills. Or even, you know, finish watching all of those Netflix series that you've been wanting to watch. I think the key really is being actively doing stuff and not just that but owning it and feeling like you've chosen to do it never did i ever think that i would enjoy quarantine this much One of the main things that has helped me through this whole process and not just cope, but really truly enjoy it is being part of a WhatsApp chat group of fellow quarantiners here in this hotel. We call ourselves the Nina Hotel Island South Inmates. And in this WhatsApp group, we share everything from how we're feeling today to what we thought of dinner tonight to any tips and hacks that we've learned. Last night, it was Friday, we had Friday drinks, we, had, we did Microsoft Teams, everyone was on camera, we got to know each other. <laughs> it went on for about five and a half hours, there was lots of drinking. And uh, at one point there was even karaoke, we were dancing, it really was magnificent. I would absolutely encourage you to find if there's a chat group like this for people doing quarantine in your hotel. I think you can find people who can empathize with you who maybe are also doing quarantine in, in the country. But if you can get connected to people who are in the same kind of space, the room is gonna be the same layout, they're eating the same kind of food as you are, have the same problems, then I think if you form this sort of community, the support that you get, the, the connection that you get with this is so, so, so much better. So I would absolutely encourage you to try and find such a group, or if you can't find such a group, then, you know, set one up. Uh, a lot of the people who found out about this WhatsApp group started from the Hong Kong Quarantine Support Group on Facebook. I'm not sure where you'll be quarantining, but do see if there's a similar quarantine support group on Facebook. They seem to be existing in many different places with these quarantines. Uh, I know in Malaysia there's one as well. Another fun way that you could connect with other quarantiners in your hotel is to use the hotel's phone system. System. Most hotel phone systems will allow you to dial any other room in the hotel. So all you need to do is pick a number, a uh, lucky number, or it could be neighbors right next to you. Pick up the phone, introduce yourself, and why not try and start a friendship? What's the worst that could happen? They say no, you put down the phone and you pick a different room number. 
uh, I'm really confident that you will get a lot of success doing this. So uh, if you do take my advice and do this kind of room to room calling or set up a WhatsApp chat group, then I would absolutely love to know how this goes. So please do leave me a comment. And of course, you can and you should also connect with your friends, your family, your loved ones. It feels like Christmas really. I think that we are so fortunate to be living in a time when it's so easy to connect with people that we know anywhere around the world. Tomorrow I'm actually attending my friend's wedding. Uh, it's physically in Australia, but because of COVID-19, this whole pandemic thing, people can't travel, so they're actually live streaming it and that's how most people will be attending the wedding. So I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, so if you have any other ideas about how you can be social, how you can form connections, during quarantine, then I'd absolutely love to know as well. So please do leave me a comment and let me know how things go. Cheers. If your quarantine lasts for longer than about what, seven days, then I guess you're gonna to want to do some laundry. Uh, but before that, probably think about what you're going to be wearing during quarantine. Now, I usually wear these quite thin, lightweight undershirts and if I'm cold, then I can always put on some extra layers uh, or basic t-shirts as well. Uh, also, this grey sweatpants, which I really love, they're so comfortable. Uh, both of these things are from Uniqlo, by the way. And uh, maybe more importantly, when it comes to laundry, these items also dry really quickly. So here's the thing, there are two kinds of people in quarantine. There's a kind who will spend pretty much their entire quarantine complaining about how the whole quarantine thing is so unfair, how they have no control, no choice over all these things that are happening or not happening to them. Probably they'll use words like prisoner and solitary confinement quite a lot. Then there's the other kind of person who really accepts the situation they're in recognizes that there are lots of positive things and really takes ownership, really just embraces this very unique experience that not many people can say that they've been through. I came out to my 21 days of quarantine quite surprised that I didn't just appreciate the experience but that I really quite enjoyed it. I can't think of another time in my adult life where I have had that much time to focus on myself. I didn't really have to do many of these mini decisions that we constantly have to do throughout the day, like uh, what do I eat? What do I wear? What shall I do with my evening? Of course I had to make some decisions, but my because my options were more limited, I could really, really focus on the things I really needed to do or wanted to do and it was really quite refreshing. And on top of all of that, I actually made friends that I've been hanging out with after the quarantine. How crazy is that? So how you will experience your own quarantine is really up to you. How will you frame your quarantine story? Are you a prisoner? Are you a victim? or are you the hero of your own story? However it goes for you, I really, really wish you all the best. I hope that this video has been useful to you, that you've gained some useful information. I would absolutely love to know how it's going for you, so please do leave me a comment and let me know if you have any questions or if you have 
any tips of your own, any insights that you'd like to share with others, then please do leave me a comment. I promise you, I read all of my comments here on YouTube. If you've enjoyed seeing me on your screen, then do consider subscribing to my channel and follow me on more of my adventures. Until next time, stay happy and be the hero of your story.